Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing what the Yagduza boss battle looks like when you use the two separate duelist subclasses, but that's going to be after I do a brief explanation as to what they are and what sets them apart. So the duelist is a new class in Pixel Dungeon in which you can use different weapon abilities. Now these weapon abilities are based, of course, on the weapon that you're using. You're not going to be able to... Uh, you're not going to be able to block somebody's attack with a great X. That's what the great shield does. Or a mediocre shield, depends on how much you upgrade it. Each different weapon has a unique ability for the duelist. And at higher tiers, the weapon abilities are generally weaker than the ones that are at lower tiers. If we were to take the battle axe as an example, it does 55% damage, whereas the mace does 60% damage with the same exact ability. This means that in theory, you could play as a duelist using lower tier gear and instead focus on using your weapon abilities as your source of damage. And by playing as a duelist that focuses on this, I'm of course referring to the monk class. The monk class gets a variety of abilities focusing around, well, weapon ability, well, lower tier weapon abilities and their its own separate monk abilities. So when you are playing as a monk, you regenerate one energy per time that you kill a mob. So you're going to be charging up that energy and you're going to be releasing it using the five different monk abilities. Flurry is two instant attacks. Focus blocks a single melee attack. Dragon kick knocks, oh sorry, dash is pretty much teleportation. Dragon kick knocks everyone backwards around you if you are using the empowered version and meditate will cure all negative status effects and this is uh the empowered versions you can see here and the reason why i'm saying that this version this subclass focuses on using lower tier items is because the monk's unencumbered spirit has you more spirit energy regeneration if you're using lower tier gear so if i were to use this rapier as my end game weapon which is a terrible idea i could get twice as much energy regeneration so this means I could keep all my gear from right now, all the way until the end game. And theoretically, it could be a good idea. That's ignoring the fact that this armor would not protect me very well at all. And neither would this rapier. And the monk abilities kind of don't deal enough hurt to, uh, you know, kill people. And you also can't really regenerate the energy fast enough to kill every single enemy with a monk ability. So it does mean that you're going to be have to, having to rely on those weapon abilities quite a bit. And the alternative of this being that you are, of course, playing a monk with a pretty uh, weak, well, strong gear, but uh, without the uh, actually using your monk abilities, which is kind of sad to pick a subclass and be like, I'm not really going to use your abilities very much because I want to have good gear, which I think is an unfortunate choice to have to make, which is one reason why it's like the uh, Ring of Force is actually an exception to the thing, but you also can't get those consistently, so it just is a bit of a jerk thing. And also, the Ring of Force, uh, it doesn't have a weapon ability. So you're not benefiting from the ability to use your... Um, lower tier weapon abilities if you're playing as a monk using the Ring of Force. Which is very sad. And you could say, oh wait a minute, Brawler Stance, it makes it so that I can... I can use the ring as damage while also using one of these ab weapons. That is true! And you also can use those weapon abilities, but that also means that you're regenerating the spirit energy less quickly. Which is the reason why you're wanting to use the ring. And you also need to have some sort of compensation for the fact that your armor is complete and utter trash. That's either becoming good at the game, like me, uh, except I can't dodge attacks for the life of me, or it means relying on other rings, which they kind of aren't consistently dropped in the slightest. Which I find to be unfortunate, once more. Because I really like the idea of the subclass. I, I like having the ability to use a variety of abilities. However, uh, I also want to be able to uh, pack a punch while doing so. Quite literally, in 
in this case. For the build that I'm going to be showing in the uh, Yangduzo boss fight, I'm going to be using some higher tier plate armor as well as a tier 3 weapon. So I'm not having that much spirit regeneration, but I also don't really use the monk abilities at all. That's because they're, as the class description says, they're more utility based rather than damage based. It does make sense, like meditate gives you a healing effect, dash allows you to move around. However, in order to like really use these abilities effectively, you need to sacrifice quite a bit of damage. And while, while things like the dragon kick do do a lot of damage, and there is quite a bit of damage potential from being able to do the uh, flurry attack, I just really don't like that, man. I think that you should be able to. I think that you should be able to play around with um, abilities, of a variety of abilities that are available at that range, while still uh, being able to benefit from that class. But it kind of feels like you can't. At least not without the correct rings, and obviously, you know, that can happen. It's just not frequent. It's almost like the warrior class and a speed weapon. You want to have a fast weapon in order to play as the gladiator and you know in order to play as that subclass effectively you have to have a fast weapon. If you don't find a fast weapon you're not going to choose the gladiator except for the monk. You're going to have to find a, uh, a ring of force if you want to be the most efficient in addition to uh, another ring to keep you alive, or, or just some other effect to keep you alive, because having good armor is pretty essential to the game. But I also like having more of a balance, so I don't know. Maybe maybe it is possible to survive. Like I think that monk is would be phenomenal for Faith is My Armor, and... Uh, I think that Monk is great for challenges, but not really for the base game mode, which is what I play most of the time. So here we have this Monk game. I'm just booting it up here, and I'm just, you know, beating up Yagduza and stuff. It's a super intense battle. Now, one thing you guys may notice is that I actually did manage to find a Ring of Force, and that I have the Brawler stance up, which is that... Uh, ring ability that I mentioned. Uh, however, as you may notice, I'm not really using my monk abilities at all for this fight. And that's mostly because they don't really punish enough. And also, I'm also. It also does have to do a bit with the luck of the fists that I'm battling. Because uh, that particular fist is. Uh, <laughs> the ranged fist, and I don't want to knock it backwards, although I do believe that I end up uh, punching it a few times using the other ability. Um, the uh, flurry of blows right there, and as you can see, it does a pretty reasonable amount of damage, and it's actually, like, not a ridiculous amount, but it could be helpful. However, you know, in order to use that, I'm having to sacrifice using my weapon abilities. And you may notice at the bottom there that I do have a upgraded Sae. And that is what I was using the majority of the time. So I could use that Sae weapon. It's just that I would have to alternate between it and the Ring of Force. Which means that I'm not really benefiting from using the Sae much. And instead just periodically using it instead of the benefit of having a lower tier weapon, which is a stronger ability that I can use possibly a little bit more effectively. Now, as you can see, here is the part of which I start to struggle the most, which is the uh, Soiled Fist. That's mostly because I really dislike the Soiled Fist. I really dislike it. As you can see, I do end up... Uh, I, I try using the ability, but part it's got a really high dodge, so I just decide to light it on fire. Because that's what I do most of the time against this fist. And I probably could have used the monk ability who, to, here to, you know, teleport away or knock it backwards, but just like, hey. 
Uh, yeah, so I just spend most of this bit just running away until it manages to burn. And then I'm like, you know what? I'll just root you back. But that's not a monk ability. I don't have access to something to stun people. I think that would be a, a great monk ability. Uh, actually, never mind. We do have Dragon Kick, but that's based off of knocking them a far distance, which, if you can't tell, it's kind of close quarters in there. Like, at this point, I might have been able to use the Dragon Kick ability to finish them off, but as you can see, even when I am using my weapons to try to beat them up, I'm not really doing much. That's because I'm having to use a ring that I admittedly have not upgraded very much, but the size damage is not very much more than that, I determined in my thing. And so here I'm just trying to beat him up. <laughs> uh, good old Yogg. And there actually is um, a moment here in which I benefit quite a bit from having those size. And that is because if we check out the fist that spawned, it is the Rusted Fist. Which can't come into close quarters if it is going through a thin area. So... Uh, hello, Projection Sae, which is able, once I get him out of the area, to stab. Stab real good. And hurt pretty bad, actually. You know, I then activate the Brawler Stance to show what it does. You can see that I'm now doing the amount of damage that is normally... Oh yeah, one other issue. You can't use monk abilities with enchantments. It's an unfortunate thing. But I, I was able to take him down, and I did use a few monk abilities for that, but it ultimately was not really the monk abilities that saved me, but more so the piece of gear that I had, which monk abilities encourage you not to use. That actually was a pretty good use of that monk ability, just, you know, wipe them out. But... Cooldowns are another thing that I don't really like. But yeah, here I was able to teleport over using the dash ability and just take him out. But I wasn't able to take him out using a monk ability because it was on cooldown. That's pretty much it for the boss fight there. So now we have to cover the champion, which is actually significantly simpler than the monk. And in my opinion, the better of the two. So the champion class, what they do is that they actually expand upon the weapon ability thing by allowing you to equip two separate weapons. And for these two weapons, you can use both of their abilities. And actually, each weapon also does have their individual charges. And what this means, you can totally focus on being a, a weapon-based monk. It's just really good. And another bit of being a, uh, a champion not a weapon-based monk, a weapon-based duelist. Uh, and another thing about the duelist is that you can actually share upgrades between the, uh, you can share upgrades between your weapons. So it just focuses on using weapon abilities to their maximum potential. And another benefit of it is that you can equip two weapons and then those upgrades can be shared between the weapons. So that means that you could have two different types of weapons. Uh, in the instance that I have, I use, I, I was using a battle axe? No, I was using a war hammer and some stone gauntlets. And when I used both of them together, it meant that I could do high damage to single targets, or I could charge up multiple hits to do one single strong attack because of the two separate abilities. And what this meant was that I could pretty consistently take just about anything down just using my class abilities. I didn't have to do very many normal attacks against mobs. And honestly, that's kind of what I envisioned the monk to be more like when you equip the correct gears, that you should be able to just use the monk's abilities and still have a reasonable amount of utility. However, um, it's not so. Either way. So... For champion, you can use two weapons and both of their abilities. This also does mean that you can benefit from lower tier weapon abilities 
because you can use a lower tier weapon in your offhand and then use that one's ability. So I could theoretically use this rapier on a great axe and then I could activate the rapier's ability for the great axe and that deals plus 67 so an additional third damage is guaranteed to hit because that's ridiculous and the thing is it, it's just scaling the weapon abilities and just using them in tandem with your base class features it's, I guess that it just is like you're you're taking the base class features and then expanding upon it instead of the monk, which is kind of like, oh, you, you have to use like lower tier stuff. So you're intentionally limiting yourself in exchange for abilities, which are kind of lackluster. But that's also mostly in my opinion. I also haven't had like a good monk run. So I don't know. There's certainly a lot that I do have to learn in this game still. So if my opinion is just patently incorrect, obviously you're free to have a different one than me. But either way, what the champion has, they can equip two weapons. And they can do things such as attacking the same creature twice and then killing them instantly if they're below different health, sharing the upgrades between them, and also... Um, increasing the weapon charge speed for the offhand weapon. And you also could use that with the lower tier weapon decrease as well as the thrown weapon things. Just it works really well with the, with the class as a whole. Whereas Monk, I kind of feel like it's almost a separate class, which is not bad, but it just is. I feel like subclasses should expand upon the features of the main class instead of having having you memorize an entire other set of things. If we take, as an example, the rogue, the two subclasses are the, uh, the free runner, which uh, expands upon the rogue's ability to move freely throughout the dungeon because of their cloak, and the assassin, which takes the whole sneaking damage thing, ooh, um, and cranks that up to a 10. And then we have the warrior, which they can focus on different kinds of gear, but it's mostly on armor. So both of the classes allow different focuses on the armor, with the Berserker being on higher damage weapons, whereas the Gladiator is focused on faster weapons. But both of them benefit from having strong armor, whereas the two duelist things, while they both benefit from carrying around a lower tier weapon to use as a thing, the monk, it's like, let's use it as your main weapon, having all of the negative effects of this, as well as just toss and having some cloth armor in as well. Whereas the, uh, the champion, you can do pretty much the same thing, but with more benefits. <laughs> In fact, I also had the pickaxe on me just because I thought that would be something really fun to have. And it was a pretty valid weapon. Like, I used that pickaxe hardcore. I, I murdered so many things with that pickaxe. And I could only do that because it was the champion. And I knew that I was able to pick up a temporary weapon for its cool ability. Whereas for the monk, you're committed to lower tier stuff. Well, I guess that was a bit of a rant there in regards to the thing, and it was, and it ended up being mostly about monk, actually. Heh <laughs> well, that's fun. But pretty much, yeah, the reason why I think champion works is because it is focusing on what makes the base class fun, weapon abilities, and just using those more effectively more effectively and with more frequency. Whereas the monk incur, if you were playing with it the most efficiently, you're not using weapon abilities at all. Which 
is the main appeal of playing as the duelist. With that out of the way, now let us move on to the footage of me beating up Yogduza. So one thing to know, I already did beat up one of the fists in this battle, but you know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, because of my higher tier weapons, which are stronger than the lower tier ones, I was able to just kind of completely obliterate Yogduza in that first little bit. And I'm just going to wait here. And well, at the moment, I'm not using very many weapon abilities because I used quite a few of my charges on the previous guy. But boom, I, I was able to do a high hit damage. Now I'm using my fist to, uh, you know, charge up a bunch of hits because of the uh, combo ability. And I'm just able to just demolish Yogduza. One other thing, actually, that's notable about the two runs as the monk. I only had two Ox left over, whereas for the champion run, I had three of them, actually, because I believe I lost one of them to being dumb. I, I might have lost it to uh, pricking on the uh, the chalice, which significant nerf, unfortunate there. But yeah, I just was able to beat them up. <laughs> And it was kind of substantial damage there. And then I just kind of show up to Yogg, just say, sup, I'm going to tank your laser damage sometimes, not all the time. But then just, uh, uh, bam. And now Yogg's done. So, yeah, that's it for that particular run of Shattered Pixel Dungeon, or at least this comparison. Maybe in the future I'll change my mind about the two classes because, like I said, I am a bit less experienced with them than I am with the other ones. Uh, I uh, On this device, I don't have as many completed runs, but on, um, on a different device, I've completed about... I'd like to say around three dozen runs with with um, like one to two challenges on, and maybe even like 50 more without challenges. So I'm pretty experienced at the game. But comparative to these guys, you, you could just look at my leaderboards. As you can see, the only two runs in which I managed to uh, complete the game so far for this one, out of the 12 that I have died in, two of them were the Duelist. And in case you guys are noticing, like, five of these are just now in me trying to record this video, which is fun, I guess. But yeah, pretty much thoughts about the classes. Champion good. Monk could be good. Uh, a bit more situation, though. Um, I think that the Yog doza battles speak for themselves, like the chess. And I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you guys have thoughts about these two subclasses, you know, prove me wrong. How is Monk infinitely better than Champion? Tell me. I need to know the truth about this thing. And then I'll be able to have immense knowledge imparted upon me. Or not, because Monk is actually, like, super weak. And I actually have overestimated its power. Tell me, please. Generally speaking, a bunch of random people have probably played the game a little bit more than me, at least in total. But at the very least, I hope that my insights were helpful and that, um, you know, it, at, the, at the very least expanded your shattered pixel knowledge dungeon. Wait, dungeon. Knowledge. Because... I don't know, I, I've played this game a little bit too much, only for just now covering it on the channel. But with that out of the way, I hope you guys have a very good day, and I will be seeing you guys around. I'm planning for my next video to be a Minecraft Dungeons video, so I hopefully will have a bit of, uh, well, stuff prepared for that in the near future. However, this video is already dragging on for a bit longer than I wanted it to be. It's a bit rantier than I wanted it to be, but 
Yeah, this is life. Thus is life. With that out of the way, hope you guys have a very good day, and I hope to see you guys around.